In this chapter, we're going to talk about thinking, control, and intelligence. The big question here is, what does it mean to be smart? Uh, and it's really easy to identify what makes a computer smart. You can increase the uh, speed of the central processing unit, increase the amount of RAM, the amount of hard drive. All these things are very clear things that are going to make the system much faster. So we have the recent announcement of the new Apple Silicon that uh, increased performance by these certain factors. And it's just obvious that that's going to make the system smarter. But how does that work in the brain where we have, you know, all these different neurons connected with synapses? What is it about the brain that would result in more intelligence? Is it just more neurons, more synapses? Does that make any sense? Uh, in fact, if you look over the course of development, as each individual person is getting smarter, in fact, they're getting fewer and fewer synapses. Synapses are being pruned systematically and even also neurons uh, over the course of development. So it doesn't seem like just kind of more is better with respect to the structures of the brain itself. And in fact, when we look back at what we know about where our intelligence actually comes from, it comes from learning, right? Our cortex starts out with this incredibly blank slate, you know, inability to do anything. Over the course of learning and development, we develop all of our cognitive abilities. And so intelligence must be the result of learning. That's the number one bottom line point. And as we talked about many times in the learning chapter, learning is driven by motivation. And so we get back to this kind of key point that when we understand what makes people smart, we're going to really have to understand what drives learning in the brain. That is directly tied to motivational factors. And so this is going to give us a really interesting window into understanding human intelligence from a neuroscience perspective. And traditionally, many people have this fixed uh, mindset about intelligence that is consistent with that kind of computer metaphor that you know some people just have better hardware than other people. Uh, and so they're born that way and they're gonna be smarter, they're geniuses. But really, I think when we look carefully about how the brain works, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, people don't really differ in their neural hardware in any meaningful way. The only thing that differs among people has to be this kind of uh, what they've learned, what they acquire, and their motivation to perform uh, various kinds of cognitive level learning, et cetera, over the course of their lives. And so this gives rise to this difference between the fixed mindset, you know, you, you're kind of basically born that way. Uh, you can't really change your cognitive abilities, just is inconsistent with what we know about how the brain works. Instead, we have this uh, alternative called the growth mindset, which is really increasingly being explicitly taught in schools and I think is absolutely supported by the available scientific data that, you know, everything that we achieve is a process of learning. So failure is an opportunity to learn, not a challenge against your kind of innate abilities. Take every experience that you have and turn it into a learning experience, whether it's a positive experience or a negative experience and really have that basic grit and determination to understand that if you work hard enough, you absolutely can learn anything. There is no real fixed limit to what the human brain can learn, any human brain. And, and we'll, we'll get back to this later, but when we look at people who have been really successful, kind of genius level uh, intelligence, it's just a huge amount of time and effort on the domains in which they've excelled. And people just don't appreciate that that's the core driver of intelligence and success and, and genius is not these kind of innate differences. I mean, there are, there may be small differences initially, but um, really it's swamped by the effects of learning because again, that's how the brain works. The brain develops its abilities through learning. There's just no doubt about that. 